And I'm not gonna lie, this place makes me feel like I am in Mexico City. There's so many dogs here. Uh, one. Oh, no, one. Yours is one, but I mean, everybody has dogs. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, it's very dog friendly. The cat population here is actually controlled for this part of uh, Manila. I mean, everything's in English. Everything feels like it's kind of like in the US. It's really, really amazing. This place is super, super. What's up, everybody? I'm here in Manila, the Philippines. Manila is a massive city in Southeast Asia, just like many of the other big cities around Southeast Asia. But right now, I'm located in the district of Makati. Uh, Makati is where I spent most of my time during my two visits here to Manila. But I would like to go to a different district today, somewhere new. And behind me, in the distance there, if you can see, are some huge high-rise buildings that are very, very modern. Uh, they're way, way back there. And that is BGC, Bonif Bonifacio Global City is what it stands for. But it is a new up and trendy area that I believe used to be more of a military base, but now it has become like the new spot, right? And I wanna go there to see what it's about because apparently it's super, super modern and very social, very lively on the weekend. And right now it's Saturday. It is a Saturday here in Manila. And if you can see around me right now, we have a beautiful skyline. The weather is very, very nice. It's not too hot. The sun is going down, so the weather is cooling. And right now I'm just enjoying a nice view from my rooftop Airbnb here. And it's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing just to see the skyline, to hear the sounds, to soak in the city because you can hear all the children playing down there. You can hear some birds, some dogs, and you can see the planes taking off in the distance. But yeah, we're gonna explore BGC and see what it's like. So what I'm going to try to do is order a local taxi bike or moto taxi to get there because it's really the easiest way and the cheapest. So what I had to do like I did last time is come here to the Aya Ayala Circuit Mall and order the moto taxi because where I'm staying at the edge of Makati they never go that far I think because the traffic's a little too congested so instead I could just walk 10 minutes to here and then I get a automatic booking and there's already like four of them here dropping off. So I just gotta wait for the guy and then we're on our way to BGC. Alright guys, I've just hopped off that moto taxi, got over here to BGC very quick. I'll tell you what, every time driving on those things or riding on those things, it's so exhilarating, if that's the right word. You're just like whipping through the traffic, the wind is hitting you, the noise is, it's crazy. And sometimes not safe, but it felt safe. But, I want to say, as soon as we got here, you can really see how modern this place is. Everything is just so nice, even the pavement, the buildings, the shops, the sidewalks seems like a very walkable place so let's explore it now so I had the moto taxi guy drop me off at the famous high street if you don't know what high street is here in Manila high street basically is this like walking district that just connects between all these blocks and it's totally blocked off so you can walk there's lots of nature greenery shops restaurants and stuff on each side and I'm not gonna lie this place makes me feel like I am in Mexico City uh, I remember being in Mexico City and it was like this, you know, very, very upscale, very modern. And then you have like uh, the nature, the, the greenery, the, the trees and the plants and all that mixed in between, which is super, super cool. And it reminds me of the one district in Mexico City called Polanco. I don't know why, but I just, I just feel like I'm in Mexico City right now, but I'm not. I'm in Manila. 
which is very different from where I just was 30 minutes ago. So one thing BGC is known for is this colorful LED lighting. You can see it here in the fountain, there's these strips running along the ground, and then you see it all over the buildings outlining the, the structure of the high rises, which is super, super cool. And apparently down here below this fountain that's outside is the food district where there's signatures on 5th. I'm about to find out. I'm hungry. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're looking for something really good to eat, you gotta go down there to the food district. It's right under the fountains. Man, everything smells so good, looked so good. The prices were pretty fair too. Like a slice of pizza was like $3, which is, I think, similar with a lot of slices of pizza in the United States. But to be honest, I wanna find something more okay. local, something on the street. Hopefully there's some street food. I think there's going to be. Going to be. I see tents uh, selling products and stuff, so I need to just keep exploring because I'm only at one end of High Street right now, and I want to go to the other end, which gets closer towards the uh, mall, the SM, which mall is that? Aoria or something like that. But we're going to keep walking this way and see more of High Street and BGC. And right now, the skyline is lighting up very nice. The sky in the back is like a blue color because the sun had just set, and all the windows of these buildings are lighting up, and it's really, really beautiful. So basically there's these uh, little walkways that go across the street because there are streets that go um, across High Street, right? And you just have to wait for traffic and then you can walk across to the next section where you can walk between the blocks. Very, very cool. Very, very walkable city like I said. So I've only walked about halfway up High Street and I just sat down on this uh, cement barrier thing here just to take a break. There's so many places to sit and just chill out. There's so much shopping to be done. There's so many international brand stores here. And I want to point out way in the background there, you might be able to see it. Uh, one of these buildings that's, that are lighting up very well is the Shangri-La, which is like one of the most famous hotel chains in the world of high-end luxury. And that's down there at the end. Very, very beautiful building. But man, I am like surprised. I don't think I will be finding street food. I think this is too nice, too classy for street food. I think if there's going to be street food, it has to be some sort of like licensed designated area that is of high quality, right? And the street food definitely wouldn't be a very cheap, I don't think. But maybe I could find a place to sit down and have a beer. That would be nice because this is definitely a place to drink to go to many restaurants, to have fine dining and so on. And one thing else I want to point out is there are so many people with dogs here, like a lot of dogs. So maybe this is an area where people live with dogs. And I also have noticed that many of the places in Manila are very pet friendly. Uh, even a lot of the Airbnbs I looked at, they said that you can bring your pets, but you see dogs everywhere out here, big, small, and many of them, if not most of them or all of them, are very well behaved which is very nice oh it's time to cross the road i should go so so many dogs here there's so many dogs here uh one oh no one yours is one but i mean everybody has dogs. everybody yeah uh, it's very dog friendly sure? it's very dog friendly like you can bring dog yeah. yeah, okay. This is a working dog. Yeah. Like police? Police dog. Ah, okay. Very cool. 
It looks like uh, my old dog. Yeah. All right, bye bye. Well, I tried to say to that guy, uh, like, I tried to ask that guy if many people have dogs and whatnot, and like, what's the deal with the dogs? But he didn't really understand much English. But he was like, kind of like maybe a public uh, servant or police officer or something, walking a little dog that looked like a Jack Russell mixed with a beagle, and it was on duty, like sniffing, I guess. But I was trying to tell him that it looked like my old dog that I had, just a slight difference. So the part of this area that I just came to now is actually called McKinley Parkway, I believe. And it's also part of, like, it's the end of High Street, but it's pretty cool as well because more restaurants and stuff like that. Uh, this is where a lot of people actually are entering to go to High Street and start walking down that way because it's kind of like the end and exit since traffic is over here and it's not completely blocked off. Oh, surely enough, this has to be the area to find some street food, to find some some local type of food, or even some cheaper uh, international food at the Fiesta Market. Or maybe not. <laughs> I think they're just selling uh, things to go. Even over there, there's like just tons of fruit they're selling. Oh wait, maybe this is the food section. Oh, okay, this is the food section. All right, well, what I did, guys, is I just picked up something quick to bite on. This is a barbecue pork uh, skewer, and it was 49 pesos, so it seems like a good deal, but it seems extremely fatty, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to eat this. Let's try it out. Actually, it breaks down in your mouth very easily. Really, really tasty. But I just stopped at some like little outdoor food court there it was all locals. Everybody was looking at me. But I was like, I gotta get something in my stomach, so not so bad. But I have just come to the mall over here that I was talking about. I'm gonna go through here, try to cool off because it got extremely humid. Or it has been humid, but I started sweating a lot. What I'm thinking about is maybe checking out this mall here and then maybe going back to High Street and walking through that way. And maybe getting a beer at the end of the at the end of the night, end of the way back. But I'm really just trying to take in this modern district area and see how it really is because it's truly just amazing and like, I don't know, eye-opening compared to where I'm staying. It's like two different worlds. Wow, this mall is massive. Just as big, well maybe not as big as the Mall of Asia, but. I mean, this mall is giant. Look, you have a Jollibee, a KFC, and a McDonald's all next to each other. Wow, it is extremely amazing just how big and how beautifully made these malls are here. Not only in the Philippines, of course, all in Southeast Asia, but they're just so nice and they really put some of the malls in the U.S. to shame. All right, guys, well, I'm treating myself to a little feast here. Look at this. Loaded nachos. I couldn't pass it up. I saw this, like, burger place over there, and they had burgers and they had nachos. I was deciding between a burger and nachos, and I thought, I don't know, nachos are just so easy to eat. You just like, you know, pick a little bit, have a good time with it. And I didn't expect them to be this massive. This is for two people. This right here was 199 pesos, and 59 pesos for a Coca-Cola Zero. So a very affordable meal here at, uh, what, 250 pesos? Like, very, very good. First things up, hydration. Uh, wow, it's so crazy because on these nachos, there's plenty of tomatoes, there's onions, there's like cheese sauce, some white sauce, no idea what it is, um, some sort of peppers, and just so much, like, oh my god, it's just loaded. I'm gonna jump right into this. Wow. That is flavorful. There's also pieces of like meat. I don't know if it's chili, what it, what it is, but so this part of the mall is called Food on Four. So it's like the food court. It's upstairs on the fourth floor, and there's so many places to choose from. A lot of Western stuff like chicken wings, burgers, and many other things. But it's pretty busy here and. You actually have to like wait around and try to find a table. 
The real question is, will I eat this whole thing? Well guys, I just finished up eating in the food court and uh, actually I had the camera off for a little bit as I was enjoying the nachos and one of the security guards came up to me and said, I, I believe this is what he said, I kind of maybe misunderstood him, but he said like, you can film your food or you can vlog, he specifically said vlog, you can vlog your food, but not the dining area I think. So I think technically like if you wanted to sit down against a wall, you can video yourself eating and stuff. But as long as like the people aren't in the background, I think maybe it's like sensitive to have people eating behind you in the background or something. I'm not really sure, but I was just like, oh, okay, the camera's off anyways right now, so no worries. And so I didn't film the rest of myself eating or anything, but I want to say the nachos were absolutely delicious. I pretty much finished them. I just left a couple left and I still have uh, half of my Coke Zero here because I'm so full that I kind of don't want to put anything else into the system. But yeah, really, really good nachos. And I wanted to say, it had tomatoes on there, but it also had watermelon. <laughs> I looked at the tomatoes at first and I was like, why do they look so red? And then I bit into it and I was like, whoa, it's a watermelon. So it was interesting. I never had watermelon sliced up onto nachos like that, but it was pretty delicious. They were very loaded and the price was phenomenal. So yeah that's gonna cap it off here at the mall i'm gonna go back down to the street and walk a little bit try to work off some of these nachos and see what else happens if nothing else then i know i'll have to take a moto taxi back to makati where i'm staying all right guys back out here to high street and the camera's a little dark huh let's uh brighten this up a bit okay a little bit better but yeah back out here at high street and my legs are beat from walking man i'm not used to walking so much i feel like i don't know why I should be, right? I think this uh, this fullness of food is like weighing me down. Like all I did was walk for 10 minutes and I feel like I'm exhausted. But I want to say uh, while walking back down here, there were so many cats I saw. They were just sitting near the fountains. They were on the tables at the restaurant and people weren't kicking them out or anything. But then I saw a sign that said the cat population here is actually controlled for this part of uh, Manila and what they do is they they trap them they bring them to like the animal place they neuter them and then they release them again back into like the wild out here so they can uh, be free roaming right and so i guess the idea is that when they're neutered they are more calm and the population obviously can be more controlled right and so that's what they're doing out here is they're they're taking them away they're neutering them and they're putting them back out here so that way the population won't really change unless somebody decides to you know bring a cat out here a new one but i thought that was a interesting aspect to this place as you will see so many stray cats here just like uh you see dogs as pets right and the cats and dogs it seems like they don't mind each other wow guys this place is just absolutely shocking it gives me such feels of new york city of miami like of the cities that I'm used to in the United States. Very, very beautiful. There's like these willow trees here in the circle. I just got to Burgos Circle Park, it's called. But it's just so, so cool. This would be an absolutely great place to live, except you must be rich. It's just wild because like this part here, Burgos, Burgos Circle Park, really reminds me of something out of like Southern Florida, whether it's Miami, whether it's uh, Sarasota, it's Naples, it's somewhere like that. You have these like, uh, I don't know, storefronts and restaurants that resemble the same sort of structure and architecture as those in Florida. And uh, it's really, really amazing. Maybe some of the architects are the same, I don't know. Maybe they took some influence from there, I don't know. But either way, like if you dropped me right here, if you dropped probably anybody right here, and you asked them, where are you? They probably would say, oh, I don't know, <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> I mean, everything's in English. Everything feels like it's kind of like in the U.S. It's really, really amazing. This place is super, super. I'm really just blown away of how nice this area is. 
even my first time to the Philippines, I had no idea there was such a place like this. Now, obviously, it's a place that I don't really go and I wouldn't spend all my money here, but it would definitely be a nice place to hang out if you have a little bit of cash, you know? A little bit of savings that you can just kind of splurge on. I mean, there's nice cars all around here. There's super fine dining restaurants. Everybody's dressed really nice. A very cool place to go out and party. All right, well, I'm gonna finish off the night here with a beer. Uh, I went to the local brewery place or tap station that I went to before already in Manila. They have a location here where I am. And this place is actually called like Forbes Town, I guess. Very, very nice place, but finishing it off with an expensive beer. Not uh, super expensive because it's probably cheaper than it would be in the United States, but it is 240 pesos and uh, hey, it's a good way to call it an end of the day. Now I should only drink maybe one or two because if I drink any more, I won't be able to hold on to the scooter on the way back. So cheers guys from BGC. Manila's most modern district or the Philippines most modern city. Also, I should say that this beer here, the name of it is Summer, which makes perfect sense because it's basically summer almost, and it's a good fitting for the, the time of the year, right? But it is a locally brewed beer from the Philippines. It is an L, I think it's like 5.2%, so it's very, very good. And I really like this place because they really have a lot of selection. So if you're a person that likes craft beer, this is the spot. All right, guys, like I said, that was a great way to cap off tonight. Have a nice beer. And I stand corrected. It was 220 pesos. I think I said 240. I don't know, I forgot. I was looking at the pricing of all the other beers and I may have mixed it up, but excellent beer. And I'm absolutely just full right now. And I uh, feel slightly tipsy for some reason, even though it was just one beer, which isn't normal. But it is what it is. And now I gotta try to order uh, the moto taxi back to the edge of Makati because where I'm staying in Makati is basically not even Makati because it's right on the border, it's right on the edge and it's it's so close to being in the next district so it's a pretty far away and uh, actually I should say coming here you have to ride kind of over part of the highway and you go pretty fast and uh, it's a bit difficult to hold on if there's not the the box behind the scooter or on on the back of the scooter I should say it's like a utility box which helps you out because you can like lean up against it and uh, this one didn't have it this time when I came over here so you have to really hold on because usually you can kind of lean up against that and it will support your weight and you don't really need to hold on but this time have to oh and one other thing is here in the Philippines it's mandatory to wear a helmet unlike some other countries around Southeast Asia and that's a good thing I really like that all right well that's gonna be it for this video here in BGC Bonifacio, Bonifacio, Bonifacio Global City uh, very very cool district here in the Philippines in Manila very modern very shocking and this is a place that's very livable for anybody probably but can be very expensive I bet but that's going to be it. I'm heading back now, so I'll catch you guys in the next video from the Philippines. Peace.